You're welcome, Patrick. My pleasure. Life changing, and it's what I call to my friends, game changer. Thanks very much for taking the time to jump on a call with me today. I'm excited to um, hear your story and hear what hostage tape has done for you and what mouth taping has done for you. So thanks so much for this. I really appreciate it. It is my pleasure to be here, Patrick. Let's jump right into it then. What was it that led you first to look down the the mouth taping path and the benefits of nasal nasal breathing? And then how did you hear about hostage tape? So it actually took a little bit of, I needed to hear from multiple sources that mouth taping was a, I don't want to say a legitimate practice, but a, a sought after practice with lots of success. So I, it's, when I had finally heard mouth taping from three different sources, I started to pay more attention to it. The first time I heard it was actually Dave Asprey um, on his podcast had spoken about it just in a general interview. Then I heard about it a second time also on his podcast, but it, but he had someone on who is a sleep expert. And I was looking for that podcast to tell you who it was. And I can't remember, but it was, you know, one of the episodes where, Dave Asprey had sort of a, a series of health experts that were all on at the same time, little clips mm -hmm. of them. And there was one particular sleep, sleep expert and they were speaking about it and mentioned mouth taping a second time. And then I heard it a, a third time and I can't remember where. And as Instagram would have it, then hostage tape started popping up on my, on my right. Instagram feed and you know, I will admit I had been hesitant to try mouth taping at first because I just didn't know what tape I would use, right? So I'd probably ignored it initially because I wasn't going to use masking tape. I wasn't going to use exactly. packing tape. Uh, and I was afraid what it would, you know, rip at my facial hair when I did it. So I just had some reticence. But when the hostage tape... Uh, marketing started showing up on my Instagram feed, I was like, well, first of all, that branding is brilliant too. Um, you know, it looks like this is actually, um, the barrier to entry was very little because I just bought it through, you know, my first 30 day pack I bought through that Instagram ad. And, um, but now I've got a monthly subscription. So now I'm on like the quarterly subscription and I'm all in. It's been, I've been almost three months now using it. Very cool. That's very neat. It's cool to hear that it's being discussed on other podcasts and then, and that's, that's starting to have, um, an impact. And then, like you said, uh, the Instagram algorithm probably did its thing once you maybe clicked on a couple Instagram videos or maybe, you know, whatever, however it works, it, it did its thing and it found you, but Hey, I'm glad it did. And, and I hope for your sake that you're, you're glad it did as well. So that's, that's super cool to hear. What, was it where you, whether it was listening to the podcasts or once you went on the hostage tape website, what pains or what were the pain points that led you to think, okay, this, this is something that I need to start doing. Did you know that you were a mouth breather? Was it snoring at night? Was it waking up with a dry mouth in the morning? What was it that led you to say, you know what? I need to, I need to be taping my mouth shut at night. Uh, snoring at night was the was the main reason when uh, we heard and I remember the the second podcast we were hearing I was listening to and I say we because it was in the car and my wife uh, was in the passenger seat and you know at first I think she had the surprise and curiosity about mouth taping and then mm -hmm. when uh, both people on that podcast, Dave Asprey and this other guest, had said that it you know can eliminate snoring. Even she was like, "Yo, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta try this." <laughs> um, now, I don't necessarily have diagnosed sleep apnea, but I do like a number of my male friends that are my age, we're all mid forties, snore at night, especially when I'm on my back. And so, uh, what I have begun had begun to do as have two of my friends who I've given some of my hostage tape to so that they can try it out. What we've begun to do is become sort of conscious, if you will, of that snoring because it bothers our spouses. And so, you know, it seems in some ways classic sleep apnea because you are kind of waking up a little bit with the snores, but right. there's also this other conscious part of like, 
of just being aware that you're snoring and you're kind of you're waking up aware that you're being loud and then trying to roll to the side or whatever. But you know what myself and one of my best friends, Esteban, our spouses tend to do is like push us while we're sleeping <laughs> to sort yeah. of roll us over on the side or essentially wake us up to kind of stop the snoring and then roll to the side. And um, I would say that was the main impetus for me wanting to try it is to see if it would stop the snoring. Secondly, when I started reading more about the benefits of nasal breathing and that it encourages not only some of the muscular, you know, facial benefits, but also in general, that nasal breathing is healthier for your circulatory system and your, mm -hmm. you know, cardiovascular system and basically every other endocrine system in your body. I thought, well, you know, let's, uh, yet another reason to do it. And I'm a pretty active yoga practitioner. So like nasal breathing itself as a benefit and virtue was not a total surprise to me. However, right. I will admit, Patrick, I had not actually ever made that connection that nasal breathing while sleeping would do or have so many positive benefits. Right. Exactly. I've done, I wouldn't say I, I do yoga frequently, but every now and then I'll get into a habit of it. And, and it's just one of those things that, I mean, for the past eight years, I've probably been doing like yoga on and off. And it's always a uh, you know, deep breath in through your nose, slow exhale. And I would always find it so difficult. And in my brain, I would just be like, why can't I just, why does it have to be through my nose? What like this, this is making it so much harder. And now since going into the, the mouth taping versus nasal breathing, um, just, just learning about all that, it makes so much more sense now. And I'm like, okay, that there's a reason why they're saying that there's a reason why they always emphasize deep breath in through your nose, then a, a slow exhale. Um, so it, it's neat to see that this is something being a, that's been around for however many thousands of years. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with James Nestor's book, breathe, but he calls it the, the new science of the lost art. And he goes into yoga and all these other different practices that always promote nasal breathing. And now you're starting to see the science come around on why it's so important. So that's, it's cool that like yourself, you, you had that yoga connection and you were familiar with it, but hadn't quite put the dots dots yet. So that's super cool. Yeah, I should actually feel, I think I have heard of him. I think that might've been the third reference that I told you I heard. He was on a podcast somewhere, Okay, a different podcast, not the um, human upgrade labs that Dave Asprey hosts. Right. Um, that was the third sort of set of the third time I had heard it in a different context that, you know, I said, all right, I need to start paying attention to this. Yeah, absolutely. So you mentioned that your wife, she was in the car listening it to it with you and she's kind of pushing, all right, maybe this is something you can look into. When you bought the tape, did you consult her or did you just say, honey, I got some tape. I'm going to try it out. What was your reaction there? And then what was her reaction? Was she like, okay, let's do this. Or was she, oh my gosh, this is what, why is it called hostage tape? Are you sure you're going to go through with this? Is it safe? What was her reaction? Uh, so yeah, I did not consult with her. I just ordered it, came in the mail and I said, <laughs> I, good I got man. the tape now. I'm going to try yeah. it. Um, and you know, what has been humorous because now over the three months, we've had a few, uh, friends of ours come and, and stay with us and it's come up in conversation is, um, I actually think it's a provocatively, uh, it's a provocative name and that's what makes it actually <laughs> memorable right, right. so right. it becomes somewhat humorous right like she'll say you know it's called hostage tape right um yeah and there's usually a somewhat banter back and forth about taping in general and can you tape during the day uh to you know she you know there's often a little bit of banter about taping our mouth during the day just yeah. out of <laughs> out of humor but yeah, yeah the name didn't necessarily scare her off um and uh it was sort of looked at she's like all right it's kind of weird right and i think that that's actually the biggest hurdle I've seen mm -hmm. even with my friend Esteban is sort of is his wife just initially thought it was weird and was going to look weird. Uh, but then once he tried it even and the results then dissolve any 
hesitation or reticence that yeah. I feel like either the user or the spouse had about the name or the practice itself. The results are pretty fast. That's what's been most remarkable to me is um, for me, honestly, Patrick, from from night one using it, I noticed a huge difference in the quality of my sleep. Um, and that's what for me was the was the shift in in belief from it being let me try it out. I'm not sure what this will do to being a strong advocate for it is because that next morning I felt like I had slept better and had slept deeper. Most importantly, right. I said I had a very deep night of rest with solid dreams and I felt more awake and aware the next day. And that kept happening day two, day three, day four, notable difference in the quality of my sleep. And prior to uh, the mouth taping, I often complained mainly about our mattress as being the reason why I didn't feel well rested. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I can't stand our mattress. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, it's on the list of things we need to buy is a new mattress. And I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be sleepy. I would complain about the mattress. What is shocking to both myself and my wife is I don't really complain about the mattress anymore. Right. It, for being um, unrested. My back hurts, right? And my side hurts right. from the mattress. Right. Uh, but as it turns out, it wasn't the mattress that was making me unrested. It was the quality of my sleep, probably waking up every now and again with the snoring or otherwise. Um, and I, I have experimented a couple of times over the last month with not using the tape just to sort of test the hypothesis. Right. Uh, and every time I've not used the tape the next day, I'm sleepier without question. I don't wake up as easy to the alarm and I don't feel as great during the day. Absolutely. And, and I'm similar and people that we talk to are similar. Either they'll try to see what it was like before using hostage tape or they'll just forget or, or be super tired and fall asleep without putting it on. And you, you start to almost forget what that bad night sleep feels like until you go through it again and you wake up in the morning, your mouth is dry. For me, my wife is usually upset because I've been snoring or getting up more or even just, just rolling over more because I'm not in as deep a sleep. I have brain fog because just less oxygen is getting to my brain. And it's, it's those days, I'm going to say they happen maybe once a month, where I just realize, oh my goodness, this mouth taping is so important. And also, I can't believe I did that for... 25 years and felt that way day after day after day that terrible when I woke up in the morning and sometimes I just marvel at how I was able to do anything without the mouth tape because you just feel so awful when you wake up in the morning your your alarm goes off you don't want to get out of bed your mouth is dry you're drinking water trying to hydrate but it feels like it just takes forever and then it just, the whole day is thrown off because now you're having coffee sooner and then you're more coffee. And then in the afternoon, you're getting fatigued faster. And really, whenever I forget, I'm just trying to make it to that next night to be like, okay, I need, I need a good eight hours here. I need to get the mouth tape on so that the next day I'll be able to reset. And it feels like, okay, now I'm back. Now I'm able to get things done again. And yeah, you're just sharing that similar experience. It's you just forget how bad it was before mouth taping. Yeah, there's another thing too I'll say because you know, I amongst my circle of friends am often the one who is recommending some what they would what my friends would consider somewhat eccentric or outside right. of the box, right? Yeah. And that's a reputation I have amongst my friends. And so while on one hand, they're not surprised that Tom has another kind of crazy, crazy idea yeah. that they want to try, but two, they'll all will try it. Right. And it, you know, it could be various, you know, different, you know, like the protein powder that I drink or, you know, the, um, green juice that I drink or bulletproof coffee, for example, or otherwise. Right. So good. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. Um, and when the mouth taping comes up, 
there is often hesitation in the following, and I get it because I sort of had it as well. And I don't know why we believe this, but it's that if my mouth is taped, I won't be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. Right. So there, there is some anxiety there um, amongst all of my friends when I've said that, or if it's not anxiety directly from them, maybe their, their spouse will, you know, was like, oh my gosh, you're going to be able to, to breathe. Now, when I'm there to dissolve that concern, I'm like, no, absolutely. You'll be able to right? surprisingly, yeah. uh, your body adapts, your body is engineered. I say your body adapts, but also the body was engineered actually to breathe through the nose, like breathing in and out through your mouth is not what it was meant for. I remember hearing on a conversation, I think it was on, might have been a Tim Ferriss podcast, but there was something it was speaking about exercise and that, you know, when you are running, for example, or doing other exercise and you're breathing through your mouth, it is terribly inefficient because you're not yeah. getting, your body's not getting as much oxygen as it needs mm -hmm. uh, in the exercise in order to perform well, right? And that, um, I remember I shared that with a friend of mine who's a runner who said that his his college running coach um, had said that over and over and over again, right? That That the nose is meant for breathing, the mouth is meant for eating. Yeah. And so... You know, this, it's just a small shift in that knowledge um, and in that mindset that then allows people to get over the hurdle of, all right, I'll try it. Um, you know, I definitely blow my nose before I go to sleep, you know, just to make sure that I've, I've yeah. cleaned uh, the nasal passages, but I haven't ever woken up feeling like I can't breathe. Like that's, that's never been the case since I started using it. Um, you know, I think the interesting little testimonial that happened just the last couple of nights is we had some other friends up here and at dinner my friend was talking about his snoring and that he went to see his dentist the hygienist at his dentist's office was talking about a surgery where you sort of you actually you you cut the little bottom part of your tongue right there's actually like a um right. whatever that particular ailment almost, is called right almost like a, a tongue tie in a sense yes right and so they have two daughters who are in single digits i think the elder one is 10 and they actually had that snipped for both of their daughters because when they were nursing they couldn't latch on but he never did and it is hereditary and so the dentist was saying hey listen you actually you know you're, she described this anatomically to him that the tongue gets caught back in the throat and it causes snoring and you know etc and so, you know, he's somewhat hesitant of getting that surgery. And while he was here, I said, listen, try this hostage tape. And so they were here two nights. And the first night, um, zero snoring. His wife right. was like, this is amazing. You didn't snore at all. And then last night he used it again. And while he did snore a little bit, my wife says that I do still snore a little bit, but it's so much more quiet, sort of like, sort of like muffled snoring that it's, it doesn't disturb her. And I guess doesn't certainly doesn't wake me up the way that your stereotypical snore does when your your mouth is open and right almost more like a sleep apnea reaction where your body is trying to grab oxygen. So yeah, um, I think I might have another convert in my friend uh, Carl cool. was here last night. Yeah, that it's cool. Like you said, I, I'm in a similar boat of here's the new, let's call it biohack that I'm doing, whether it's right bulletproof coffee or a new diet or um, trying this new thing. Uh, I'm, what I'm on right now is I'm on um, uh, shoes with no sole. So they're flat shoes and it's better for your feet. So all, all these different little things, but I would have a similar reputation of Hey, try this new thing, try this new thing, try this new thing. And a lot of the times there'll be eye rolling or right, here we go again. So I like that, how you're just in that similar trajectory. But when you start to say, here, it's it's a little piece of tape, it's inexpensive, and here's what it's done for me. And, and you can share your story and just get someone to try it for 
whether it's one night, whether it's for a couple nights. And if they're able to see those benefits, like you said, it it it's almost instantaneous. For some people, it takes a bit longer. But if you can get through the whole night without, you know, taking it off at night without even thinking about it, or um, if you're able to like stay relaxed and calm enough and go to sleep with it, I mean, if you can go from, if you can eliminate snoring, the next morning you're just going to feel amazing. And if you can eliminate mouth breathing for six, eight hours, seven hours, however long you're sleeping for, you're you're going to feel better. There's no. There's no argument there. There's no denying it there. It's just if if you're breathing through your nose for eight hours at night, you are going to feel so much better than if you're breathing through your mouth for eight hours at night. So by by being able to say it, it works for me, give it a shot, and then just having someone do it, it's it's neat to be that person that's then able to help out your friends and help them with their snoring. So it's really cool that you've been able to you know share that and and that you're comfortable with it. Uh, so that's, that's just really cool. That, that's neat that you've been able to do that. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, hostage, the company is, is wise to so the referral program that they've created. Although I would say it's not really enough incentive for me to use my referral code where I get like $5 or something. It's almost, <laughs> it's almost, in, it's so insignificant. I almost forgot I had that code. Um, however, they are on something in the sense that you need that one connector friend who mm-hmm. is going to advocate for it and then give that other friend a few strips to try right um before they buy right whereas i just bought a whole month and that was you know i was willing to dive into it most of my friends would not be that way right like it's been me talking about it, they're over here, or I'm at their place, and I have some extra with me, and I give them a stack of four or five, and I'm like, just try it out, right? And then, you know, I I eliminate that barrier to entry. I think that that is an important piece to the whole proliferation of it. A question did pop up, though, Patrick, this morning, after my friend had used it for the second night, and, um, you know, seemed pretty, you know, pretty well convinced he wants to keep using it, I will give him my referral code. Um, for that, you know, three or five dollars, whatever it is. But the question he said was, he goes, you know, does your body then retrain itself so that at some point you don't have to tape your mouth anymore? And I said, I don't know, right? I would assume no. So then you're taping your mouth, you know, for the rest of your life. I don't know. Yeah. So it is interesting what I have, what I have read. Um, from listening to different experts on this, Andrew Huberman is is um, someone who speaks a lot about this and, and just talking with other people is your body retrains itself to a certain point. So for me, it was always, my default was just to have my mouth open, whether it was during the day, whether it was at night. My mouth was just usually always open and I was mouth breathing. And part of that was, where you're putting your tongue in your mouth. If your tongue is on the roof of your mouth, your jaw typically stays um, shut. Uh, Whereas if your tongue is on the bottom of your mouth, your jaw is more falling open. And that is either at night, that's the same for at night or during the day. And so by doing this, you're able to retrain, I guess the habit of where your tongue goes without having to think about it. But ultimately, I believe as you get older, with muscles weakening and usually you're not eating as as hard of foods so you're not getting that like jaw exercise your mouth typically starts to fall open more so the older you get um the more prone you are to snore because when your mouth falls open that's when your tongue falls back and then you're, you're having all these snoring problems and that's why typically speaking the the older you get the snore the the worse your snoring will get so it's one of those things that if you are able to retrain it, then I mean, then that's amazing. That that's awesome. But it looks like it looks like the body will only retrain itself to a certain point. And if you're that person that their facial structure is is thinner, or their jaw is not quite as strong, or their nose is more narrow, it looks like it's one of those things that it's just that's that's the hand you've been dealt in life. And there's while you can make improvements and some changes. Um, part of it is just accepting, okay, 
this is just going to be how it's going to be. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, I have a, I have a thinner nose and a thinner face and based on the science of, of the face, facial structures, mine is one that is typically my jaw is always going to be prone to falling down versus staying closed. So I've just kind of accepted that, you know, for the next, however many years, God willing that I'm alive, I'm, I'm probably going to be mouth taping, mouth taping for that time, unfortunately. But at the same time, it's also nice to know that, well, for however many years that'll be, I'm going to be getting great sleep as well. So I hope that maybe that <laughs> answers funny. your, maybe that answers it, it, your yeah, question. Yeah, I, mean, for you. I mean, it proves the assumption is that, yeah, I mean, I guess you're now you're kind of taping your mouth for life at some point once you start. The thing right. that you know, I've been curious about uh, is the nose strips as well, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, Hostage Tape has that product. Um, I've had a couple of other companies pop up on my Instagram feed, you know, that are our nose strips and, you know, that I don't know. I mean, is, I, I don't know if hostage tape is certainly trying to market it, but is there an exponent or n remarkable or even notable difference of using a nose strip with the tape at night? Have you tried it? For me, there is, I use a nose strip every night pretty much every night again unless unless i forget about it and i'm not going to show my nostrils to the camera or show my nose to the camera but it is a i do have a narrow nose i also have a deviated septum so i broke my nose when i was about 12 and there is a surgery you can get for that i read a couple horror stories online of the surgery going terribly wrong and um i think it's like cold brain syndrome where basically your nose no longer works to filter air because the surgery went so wrong. Um, but when I, from relearning how to nasal breathe and then using nose strips at night, I no longer feel the need for that. So, so what it does for me, uh, here, how can I show you is it pulls open and it just widens your nasal, um, cavity or the airway. And you just feel it, air is easier to get in. And what I also find is that if I'm a bit more stuffed up, even if my mouth is tape, I almost do, I make noise through my nose when I breathe in or out. It's almost like a wheezing. You wouldn't really call it snoring, but it's almost like a wheezing sound as the air is going in or out. If my nose has like a bit of congestion in it, but by using a nasal strip, you eliminate that sound. The air can just go back and forth and there's no wheezing sound. So I use, I use nasal strips every night and, and yeah, I, I notice a big difference as to when I wear them versus when I don't. And when it comes to exercise, if, I mean, my goal is, is trying to do all types of exercise, only nasal breathing. And that's when I notice it the most during the day is if I'm exercising, whether it's going for a run or weight training or playing some sort of sports, if I throw on no strips, it is night and day difference in my comfort, my ability to um, just breathe through my nose and, and just kind of like regulate everything that way. It's just night and day difference. What it does if you're wearing them while you exercise, that's, that's the moment where I notice it the most. And then at night I notice that if I'm congested or not, it eliminates that sound. So I recommend it. If you have, if you notice that there's, it's almost noisy breathing when you're nasal breathing or that, you know, you're a bit congested or your, your nose is thinner or your nostrils are smaller. I, I strongly recommend them as well. For me, for me, it works wonders, especially when I'm exercising. That's when I notice it during the day. At night, I mean, I'm asleep, so I don't notice it at, at much. But in those 10 minutes before falling asleep, I'll notice it as well. Interesting. Yeah, that's been the one that I have not yet uh, jumped on the bandwagon for. Um, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of think that there, there should be some kind of, um, with my order or like my next order of hostage tape, like, you know, send me a week's worth of nose strips for free. Right. Like, like I need the, the trial version of the nose strips. I don't want right. to buy yeah. 30. Right. Yeah, right. That's, right. That, sort of that's the barrier to entry here. Right. Like, you know, right. I can read as many marketing emails as I want, but you know, um, yeah. you know, I wanted to dip my toes first. Yeah, absolutely. Try it out for sure. Yeah. 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 I, I find huge, huge benefits from them. And 
Yeah, I mean it's 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 meant as a complementary piece to go with the mouth taping. So it's not it's not something that everybody needs, but if you are one of those people that that does need it, you will you will have uh, massive benefits when it comes to nasal breathing. That's for sure. Interesting. Well, we can end off there, Tom. This was only supposed to be 15 minutes and we've gone double that. So I, I really appreciate you uh, sticking on here and, and sharing your story. Again, like you said, some people are willing to dive in and buy it right away. Other people want to hear that it works. And, and it's through stories, you willing to come on here and share your story, so, stories such as these that we'll be able to just help as many people as possible. Anyone who might think that it's you know it's just another gimmick or a fad and something that doesn't really work it's stories like this that are going to help those people and and ultimately change their lives because that's that's what nasal breathing does is it's it's a life-changing thing once you start so i just want to say thank you so much for this i really appreciate it you're welcome patrick my pleasure life-changing and it's what i call to my friends game changer <laughs>